Hello everyone and welcome back to Brooke's Beauty Bazaar. My name is Brooke and in today's video I am going to share my acne story. Roll the footage. So it recently dawned on me that I have this whole channel and I talk about fungal acne and skincare every single day of my life, but most of you guys don't actually know my history with acne and the severe cystic, itchy, hormonal adult acne that I experienced. I want you guys to understand that I have had acneic skin for 17 years of my life, so from the time I was 13, and it wasn't until I was 29 years old that I finally was able to clear my skin without the help of a dermatologist, prescription drugs, harsh chemicals, or expensive products. So if you guys want to find out how I finally got clear skin, stay tuned. We are going to cover 17 years in a span of about 15 minutes, so let's do this. All right, I just want to tell you guys as my opening statement here, this is not going to be the acne story that you guys have heard a million times over. I wasn't able to clear my skin with any miracle product. There is no miracle product. I didn't use essential oils and have a whole life change. I wasn't using Accutane to clear anything. I didn't get prescribed any other thing that actually cleared my skin. So we're going to rewind to 17 years ago when I was 13 years old and I first started experiencing acne. Now at that time, my acne was very superficial, it was cosmetic, and I would treat it with a benzoyl peroxide topical treatment, clean and clear, clear still, one of those that you get from the drugstore. Now this product worked to clear up my pimples, but it definitely wasn't working to prevent new ones from coming, so I was constantly having to use this and I never really stopped using it. But at that time, a lot of my friends also had acne. It was a normal part of growing up and your rite of passage, so it didn't really bother me too much and I continued to use that. As the years went on and things got a little bit more intense, I did move into using Proactive, their three-step system. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. If you also use that, go ahead and drop the green alien head down in the comments section so we can relate with each other. But ultimately, my skin just continued to get worse the older I got, and it was towards my later teens that a lot of my friends had started to clear up, and I wasn't having those results, so I was heavily influenced by them after asking them what they were doing to go and see a dermatologist for the first time. So my cycle of seeing a dermatologist starts around this time, and I probably saw a dermatologist consistently for one to five years, and during that time, I probably saw five or six different dermatologists. So at first, they gave me lots of prescription topicals and a simple routine, including bar soap or Cetaphil wash. One time, I remember I was prescribed this disgusting sulfur treatment that you could tint to be the color of your skin, but the tint actually just turned the product a shade of bubblegum pink, much like the penicillin that we took as children. Thumbs up if you did that as well. And obviously, I think suffice to say, it didn't work out for me. From that point, I was also prescribed things like birth control pills, Retin-A, Epiduo, and you name it, I have used it. But again, you guys, nothing worked at all for me. I continued to get acne. I continued to see worse problems with my skin. So then I finally get to my last dermatologist that I ever saw for acne, and he observes my skin, makes some notes, and lets me know that if I ever want to clear my skin for real, I'm gonna have to take Accutane to do that. Now some of you guys may know, Accutane is given as a last final resort, but he did let me know there was one stop I could take before that to see if it worked out for me, and that was to take antibiotics. The final stop news was kind of music to my ears. I definitely wanted to try antibiotics before I was going to take Accutane. And thus begins multiple rounds of antibiotics. I would take one type of antibiotic and then eventually it would stop working. So I would have to take a different kind. I would take multiple rounds of that one. It would stop working and then I would take a different kind. So we did multiple rounds all the time. And every single time that I would come off of them, my skin would get crazy. And I'm not sure if you guys know this about antibiotics, but there is something called antibiotic resistance and it's a real thing that I was experiencing. So if you take them too long, they eventually become ineffective. So I just want to take one step back and also emphasize the fact that antibiotics are a way you can treat bacterial acne. So the reason that those antibiotics were so effective at treating my acne is because they kill the bacteria that lives on your skin 
And that bacteria and the yeast that's already occurring on your skin is eating all of the excess oil that your sebaceous glands are producing. And it's eating it so much that then it's populating itself until you have all this inflammation inside of your hair follicle and it results in a pustule or a papule. And that's acne in layman's terms, the best I can describe it. So the problem actually occurs with the fact that those antibiotics aren't just going to affect the top of my skin, my epidermis. They are actually going to be inside of my body killing all the other good bacteria that I need for good gut health and my body to process properly. So as soon as those antibiotics finally became totally ineffective, and I got off of them for the last time, my skin was at an all time low. It was completely erupting with cystic, terrible acne, and I had no hope. And so just like my dermatologist had told me, here's your last stop, it's time to take Accutane, do you wanna do it? And I said, well, <laughs> I have no other choice. I'm gonna have to take it. So I started getting all of my ducks in a row to take Accutane. Just like I explained antibiotics, I just want you guys to understand how Accutane works to clear your acne. So Accutane is a derivative of vitamin A called isotretinoin, and it works by causing your sebaceous glands to produce less oil. Therefore, you don't have as much sebum for the bacteria and the yeast to feed off of. So it's supposed to eliminate acne for good by changing your sebaceous glands. Now, I don't know if you guys have taken Accutane or if you know somebody who did, but there are some major side effects, so you have to monitor your health constantly. You have to, at the beginning, commit to getting blood work done every single month, and you have to commit to two types of birth control because if you were to get pregnant while taking Accutane, there could be some severe birth defects with your baby. Now, on top of all of this, Accutane actually has now been taken off of the market because people have proven that it also causes people to develop IBS, or Irritable Bowel Syndrome but isotretinoin does appear under different names. They just took the actual brand name of Accutane away, so you can still get this drug. Now the real cherry on top of all of this information is the fact that you can actually take Accutane and your acne can come back. I happen to have been working with someone at that time who took Accutane three separate times and her acne did come back every single time. And as if your acne coming back isn't enough, you also have to pay a hefty price tag for Accutane. Now at the time, and you guys can correct me in the comments below if you've taken it and you know this to be different, but with good health insurance, I was still gonna have to pay upwards of $300 for a monthly supply. So I remember I got set up to take this stuff and the last thing I did before I went to go get my blood work done was ask the nurse at the dermatologist's office, how does it actually work? And I will never forget this, you guys. She looked at me and she said, well, it completely changes your whole body from the inside. And I just thought, okay, is that safe? <laughs> that like gonna be okay for me to actually take but she was all gung-ho for it because I'm pretty sure she was taking it she knew tons of people who took it and let's not forget you guys Accutane was being majorly hawked at this time and because of pharmaceutical reps making deals with these dermatologists they were literally handing it out to everyone so I'm there getting my blood drawn and you know, I used to be a pro at that because I have had some medical experiences in my life, but you guys, I am like literally blacking out getting my blood drawn at this point. And I remember I push out the door and I have to go sit outside because it's a little bit cool. It must've been like the winter time. And I sit down and I just thought, nope, I'm not doing it. I, I chicken out completely and I couldn't go through with the whole process because the blood drawing experience was so bad for me that I couldn't see myself going monthly to get blood drawn and having to do all of this extra work plus paying all this money when it may not even work out for me and I could have crazy side effects that I wouldn't know about until years later. So seeing as how the last resort from a dermatologist isn't gonna work out for me anymore, I decide, you know what, I'll take matters into my own hands. Me and my body, me and myself, we will become one with nature and I'm going to take a natural approach to healing everything going on with my body. So fast forward, here I go. I start doing Whole 30s on the regular. I do Candida cleanses. I start doing the oil cleansing method with my skin and I pay money to these little witch doctor people on the internet who give me all these routines to follow. And they have got me 
putting jojoba oil, castor oil, olive oil, coconut oil all over my skin as if this is going to actually clear my acne once and for all. On top of treating my skin that way, I am eliminating dairy, I'm eliminating gluten, I'm completely eliminating sugar. And even though eating a little bit of a cleaner diet had ultimately helped me to feel better on the inside and I think reduced a lot of inflammation, my skin externally had never looked worse in the sense of I didn't know it could be that bad. All right, before I continue the story, I did just want to also point out one thing. And even though I sit here and I appear very happy in my videos, and I am actually a very happy person now, at that time of my life and all during my really severe acne years, my confidence was at an all-time low. I completely stopped myself from doing any social activities. I didn't hang out with people. I didn't meet new people. And I just really did not live my life at all. I was a complete hermit because it had taken this extreme toll on my mental and physical well-being. And I couldn't face people because I didn't feel like when I looked at people, they could see me. I thought all they can see is all this terrible skin. And unfortunately, that was sometimes true because I had experienced people saying, well, you need to try this. Why does your skin look so bad? Or, you know, I know what will cure your skin. And I was so done with hearing unsolicited opinions on my skin because the one thing you don't want to do when someone has terrible acne is point it out to them. Please never do that. If you have clear skin and you know you're watching this for your child or for someone that you love, never point out how bad it is. Let them deal with it in their own way and let them bring that to you. It's just, I could go on for hours about the mental aspect of this and maybe we can talk about that in the future in a separate video, but I just want to say that now because I know a lot of you guys are struggling in the same way. All right, you guys, so all the torture of all this restrictive diet, all of this oil cleansing, and guess what? Nothing was getting better, nothing was working for me. I'm around 23 to 24 at this time, and I, like everyone I know, is obsessed with beauty gurus and skincare gurus on YouTube, and I'm watching those people religiously, but nothing that they recommend really can work for me. And I one day stumble across someone called Caroline Hirons, and I still love her to this day. Now, she is not in the fungal acne realm, so I can't really follow everything that she says, but during that time, I remember just watching her videos and learning so much about actives and skincare and why skincare is formulated the way that it is. And I just started to really educate myself about products. And it was thanks to her that I just decided I'm gonna quit treating my skin like I have acneic skin and just start treating it for preventative measures and anti-aging because by this point I had developed so much hyperpigmentation and scarring that I thought if I don't get ahead of this right now, I'm never gonna be able to help my skin heal from this. So at this time, I just start using a lot of acids and different things and my skin does gradually start to improve some. So this was kind of an experimental time for me. I tried different formulas. I found things that I liked. I knew at that time then that I really loved glycolic acid as one of my key ingredients. And I knew that my skin really responded well to vitamin C and vitamin A and different topicals like that. Now this is not to say that those products actually cured my acne, but over the course of using those products consistently for years, and I mean many, many years, I did start to see some improvement in my skin. And I would say that I got my skin cleared about 80% of the way when it comes to the cystic acne, but I still had plenty of active stuff pretty frequently. At any given moment during that time, I would have 20 to 30 pustules and papules on my skin. But when you're coming from a place where you actively had 200 plus active problems on your skin at any given moment, 20 to 30 doesn't seem like such a big deal anymore. And I remember at that time, I also had gotten one of my first like ultra magnifying skin mirrors and I would just observe my skin in that mirror for hours on end trying to figure out why do my pores look so big? Everything looks so disgusting and my entire skin just when I would look at my skin up close or just regular, I could tell that it didn't look like healthy, good skin. It just had this weird like filmy, opaque, awful texture to it that it almost just felt like my skin wasn't even breathing, if that makes sense to you guys, because it was completely congested. 
So we're gonna fast forward a few years again, and by this time I'm 27 or 28, and because I've been using ingredients that are actually really good for your skin, I do occasionally have some really good skin moments where I feel incredible because I can almost clear up all my pimples and things are looking really good, especially if I wear makeup. But when I would take it off, I still felt like my skin was terrible and it had a really rough texture to it. And as I explained to you guys, I just don't even know how to describe how unhealthy it really did look. All right, now during this time, my twin sister stumbles across something called fungal acne while searching the internet. And side note, if you guys aren't aware, I do have an identical twin sister and oddly enough, our skin journey has been almost identical and we have gone through this process together, so we've been able to support each other through it. So she stumbles upon fungal acne around that time, and at first glance, it just doesn't really tick any boxes for her. It is described solely as a bumpy rash that itches and primarily occurs on your forehead, and you guys, at that time, the only thing itching on me was my severe eczema, contact dermatitis, and lip rash problems that were just ridiculous. Therefore, she doesn't really think it applies to our skin, and we just continue on, and over that year, nothing clears up, and we're just like, you know what, we are well into adulthood now. Shouldn't our skin just start to get better? And it just never did. And so then, about a year after first discovering fungal acne, she's doing some more research and comes across it again, and she finds out that the Malassezia furfur yeast, which is the cause of fungal acne, is the same yeast that causes people to have eczema and contact dermatitis and seborrheic dermatitis and all of those kind of skin rashes that occur. And it totally just light bulbs in her head and she says, well, we must have this. This has to be it. And we basically talk about it and decide there's no reason we shouldn't try a routine that is fungal acne friendly. And you guys, as soon as we started using fungal acne friendly products, I am telling you, we started to see results instantly. And we had always told ourselves that if we ever figure out how we can clear our terrible cystic hormonal itchy crazy acne skin, we are gonna have no choice but to share it with the world because nobody deserves to go through that, especially the mental toll that it takes on you. And from that moment on, this channel was born and all the videos that I have made regarding the topic since then, as well as brooksbeautybazaar.com. Now, during this whole time, really until recently, I could never make that connection of why my cystic acne had been so crazy and uncurable. And I did just wanna reiterate to you guys, I think that the whole reason that I had that severe cystic acne was because I did have fungal acne from the very beginning, and that's why nothing ever worked to fully clear me. And then when I was taking those antibiotics, because it was killing all of that good bacteria, I then had this major yeast overgrowth in my gut that was then affecting me from the inside and outside. I was then feeding all of that yeast and bacteria with those lipids by putting coconut oil onto my skin, therefore just exacerbating the problem so severely. And that is really what I do believe caused me to have that crazy hormonal itchy adult acne. So I know that a lot of you guys watching have been able to clear your skin and use products like that, but some of you guys who are discovering me now have been asking me, how did you get rid of your cystic acne? I need to know. And this is truly the key to how I cleared my cystic acne. This video will tell you all of that. But if you guys are trying to jumpstart that process, I did want to let you guys know that I have created a better skincare guide that you can go and download. It costs $14.95, which is less than a bottle of good sunscreen or moisturizer, to be honest, and it will help you guys jumpstart by giving you the exact products, routines, and system that I actually use to clear my skin once and for all. Now, if you guys are at that place where you have severe cystic acne, I did just want to let you guys know, I truly believe that cystic acne is a result of internal and external forces, and so it would be a really good idea to, in addition to using good skincare products, start getting your internal processes going right. So you need to eat a healthier diet, be a little more balanced, drink plenty of water so your body can heal itself and function properly. You don't have to totally eliminate gluten and dairy and sugar and all of those things, but definitely think with a moderate mindset when it comes to how you eat. Be active and try to eliminate as much stress as you can in your life because I do think that stress is a major factor when it comes to acne. 
And because your mental health is suffering so much, that stress and mental health factor is going to play into how your skin looks and how your body feels. That being said, I do think you guys can get really good skin without any extreme measures just by using much better skincare. All right, so we gotta wrap this thing up because it has been a long journey of my acne story today. But if you guys have enjoyed this and can relate, tell me in the comments below. I wanna hear from you. I am going to link a whole bunch of my other videos that I've made on this topic, as well as articles I've written on my blog and some of my favorite products to get you guys started in the down bar below. And don't forget, you can come follow me on Instagram at Brooks Beauty Bazaar, where I hang out every single day. Oh, she <laughs> hates it. Oh, Gigi says she loves you guys and she'll see you on Instagram. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> she hates being held, guys. <laughs> You're the best baby. You're the best baby. <laughs> Let's take a thumbnail. Oh, look at the camera. Make like a disgusted face in case we put like your before and after. <laughs> you know, one that you'd be okay with being on the thumbnail. <laughs> I can't. They all look terrible. They all look disgusting. Or expensive products. Do I have to do it again? No, but look at the camera. Roll the <laughs> Okay. I don't think I was gonna get better than those. No, that was good. Descriptions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> on top of that, Accutane. Um, okay. Now on top okay, on top of that, okay. I'm gonna say, okay. Now I okay. Knowing all of that, Accutane. Oh, and I'm gonna say this, okay. With your baby, okay. <laughs> okay. You're free will <laughs> I gotta get this out because then we have to restart the thing because we're at 22 minutes. Alright, okay. we'll hurry it out. Okay.